Coming up today on this week's episode, Nintendo responds to poor Nintendo 3DS launch with an immediate price drop, Halo 4 to be Xbox 360 or 720 bound, and then my world exclusive news related to God of War. Much, much more to come. This is Nick's Gaming View. Hello everybody and welcome to Nick's Game and View episode number 48. You're here with your host, Nick McCandless. The show we have all been waiting for, I've been hyping it all week. World exclusive news and details related to the God of War franchise. First and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to all of those who emailed me their questions. I was able to get 90% of them answered and you will get your answers later in the show. My biggest shout out though goes to the man himself, Stig Asmussen. Thank you so much for taking your time to do this interview with me and for your cooperation. Without his support, this would not have been made possible. So huge shout out to him. Let's go ahead and head into the news, and then we'll get into the details you've all been aching for. And for those four or five people that emailed me telling me to stop lying about having exclusive news, I look forward to hearing back from you after the show. I'm really interested with what you have to say now. Anyway, let's head into the news. Nintendo responds to a not-so-good launch for the Nintendo 3DS. As we all know, Nintendo held high hopes for the latest handheld gaming device, the 3DS. But due to the $250 price point, I feel it's safe to say the device failed miserably against Nintendo's expectations. Taking action to bring the device back to life, Nintendo announced earlier this week that on August 12th, the Nintendo 3DS will officially drop from its $249.99 price point down to $169.99, roughly a 33% cut. For those who took the early plunge and invested in the 3DS at its $250 price point, Nintendo has stated any owner who logs into Nintendo's eShop on the device before the official price drop August 12th will receive 10 free NES Virtual Console games September 1st, in addition to 10 more Game Boy Advance Virtual Console games that Nintendo does not plan on releasing to the public before the end of the year. With the PSP outselling the 3DS 2.5 to 1 this past quarter, it seems Nintendo has learned the price point in which their market is willing to dish out. And let's hope they apply what they have learned to the pricing of the upcoming Wii U. Hasn't even been out 6 months, and they're already giving it a 33% price cut. Is it a surprise? Not so much. Let's hope that Nintendo analyzes this when they go to decide on the price for the Wii U. Yes, it's powerful hardware, that tablet controller is nice. But at the same time, you launch that device at $400. It's not going to turn out so well. So Nintendo, you're going to have to take a hit. And yes, it will hurt you financially, but use your software to back it up. We'll have to see what happens. I'm looking forward to seeing what Nintendo announces the Wii U's pricing at. I'll keep you all tuned in. Now, Halo 4 to be Xbox 360 or 720 bound. Frank O'Connor, creative director of the studio taken over for Bungie with the Halo franchise, 343 Industries, revealed during a Comic-Con 2011 panel that they have been working on Halo 4 for a couple of years. Frank did not specify whether or not this couple of years includes actual game development or just planning, leaving the question of whether it will hit the Xbox 360 or not open for discussion. So Frank did not state exactly whether they've been developing the game the past couple years or just been working on it the past couple years. You may be like, well, why does it matter? If they've been developing the game and actually building the game the past couple years, more than likely it would be launching on the Xbox 360 because I highly doubt they had the Xbox 720 development kits ready a couple years ago. Could they just be planning the game and when they get the development kits start from there? That's also a possibility. I'll keep you all tuned in. That's it for the news this week. I know there's not much news. But that's not why you're watching the show. Come on. You want to know what's going to happen with God of War from this point on. And I'm here to bring you guys the world exclusive. Let's go ahead and head into the interview. And I'll be right back. Hello, everybody. You're here with Nick McCandless, CEO of TheGamerAccess.com and host of Nick's Game Interview, as well as Stig Asmussen, director of God of War 3. How are you doing today, Stig? Good. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. Now, before we jump into any specifics, can you give us an overview of what your job is at Sony Santa Monica? Yeah, I'm a creative director. Um, like, for example, on God of War 3, um, what that meant is that 
I kind of have to lay out the roadmap of what the whole game is going to be and on a daily basis make sure that the team's executing it. Not make, when I say execute, I don't mean um, people are getting their tasks done on time and that kind of thing, but in terms of like the quality and the gameplay and, and the feeling and the spirit of the game, i got to make sure that all that stuff comes together and uh, it's a great experience. And you did a great job. God of War 3 turned out amazing, so we thank you all for that experience. Thank now, you. That's music <laughs> now, how were you able to land such an awesome job working on one of the best video game franchises to date, God of War? Well, it's, I mean, it's just about the, the trek, you know, working, I started working at Midway um, out, after I got out of college, and, and I thought I was going to be there forever. Uh, and they, they closed, one day they closed the studio. And two weeks later, I ended up here, and it was working. I got a War One pretty early in the process, and I was a lead environment artist. And uh, we, when they, we started up on two, uh, I was asked to become art director, so we did two, um, and that that went really well. And then on three, uh, our former director Corey Barlog uh, left uh, pretty early into the project, about eight months in, and they asked me to become the director, step in, and get the game done. So uh, it, it, it all feels to me, though, like it's been a pretty natural progression. It's something that uh, I'm really comfortable with, and I'm enjoying it every day. Now, obviously, we all know that the original director of God of War was the legend David Jaffe. How was it like working with Jaffe? It's great. I mean, he's a very inspiring guy. He, uh, he, he definitely laid out a vision that everybody could get behind. It's one of the big reasons why I came to work here is because I thought the game was awesome. And uh, he pushed us every day to, you know, just do the best that we could. And, and uh, um, within this studio, he gave us, you know, the creative tools to, to make sure that we could execute. I mean, he's, he's got no shortage of good ideas, and, and that's why this series has been so successful, because he, he kind of set the table for us. All right, now, like I stated before, God of War 3 was nothing short of amazing and left the industry stunned. Would you say that Sunny Santa Monica accomplished all of your goals with God of War 3? And if anything, what would you like to change or improve if given the opportunity? Um, yeah, I definitely think we accomplished all of our goals. I think we went beyond what we what we set out to do. Uh, in terms of changing, there's not there's not a whole lot of change. I mean, we we had to make some cuts to one of the like a major Titan battle that was at the end. I've, I've talked about that publicly, and and that was a really really tough cut because we really needed three Titan battles. But uh, the, the other two that we, we ended up shipping with wouldn't have been as good. So I had, I had to make a decision, you know, are we going to go with three that are like 70% or are we going to go with two that are 110? So I, I took the two option. But I don't really have any regrets at all. I, I thought the team really stepped up to the plate. And, and uh, I remember one day when we were just about done with it, and I was playing it every single day for months. And I... <laughs> Just to, just to make sure that that everything was fun and that we were getting all of our the the, the right kind of um, feeling um, when you were playing the game and and I remember one day I was like this thing's almost done and you know what it's sweet it's awesome and I was and I don't have any regrets. Yeah, I don't think anyone can disagree with you there. <laughs> Blew me away. The first time I saw that game, I was like, wow. Now, with 3D technology becoming increasingly popular in gaming today, can gamers expect God of War 3 to receive a possible 3D patch sometime down the line? Um, there's no, t I'll be honest with you, there's no talk about it. I'm, I'm not, okay. I'm not sure how complicated it would be. The, the thing is, is that when you're talking 3D, you, you, you really want to make sure that you have a constant 60 frames per second. Right. And we, we, on three went through with a variable, I mean, we did on all the games, one, two, and three, we, we did a variable frame rate. On one, it was 60 most of the time. On two, it was at 60, about 50% of the time. And on three, on new hardware, um, you know, we, there was maybe 10%, per, 15% of the game, it was at 60. So getting 3D to work and got to work three would be, it wouldn't be a simple patch. It would be an, an overall, the whole, overhaul of the, the whole game. So, I think that's really unlikely. All right, thank you, because that, there's been a lot of people on the net. Uh, God of War 3 is going 3D, and that's kind of how I feel about it. I'd rather it not be implemented than to just tack it on like some of these other games. But, I'll, yeah, I'll leave that for another discussion. Now, with such a large percentage of God of War fans begging for some form of DLC, 
Do you feel downloadable content has a place for God of War 3? Um, the thing about the DLC is, I think we've only had one. I think it was the um, the one that came with Ghost of Sparta, with the demo skin. And right. It's it's kind of like you have to have a really well thought out plan before you go to ship. You know, this is this is kind of our DLC strategy. And unfortunately, I was so caught up with making sure that three was right. We had some things that we were interested in doing as DLC and we we're planning on doing, but those just kind of had to fall on the editing room floor because we were trying to get just the core game done. And then once you get off of it, it's like, well, we're not working on that anymore, so it's it's kind of hard to support that. So I think, once again, I think that's pretty unlikely, too. All right. Now, what are your thoughts on the PlayStation Vita? And do you see this such powerful device possibly working with God of War in some way in the future? Um, yeah, I... I think it would it would be pretty safe to say that there'd be some kind of God of War um, influence on the Vita. I I don't know any specifics on that, but it's a pretty lucrative franchise for the company, so I would think that they'd want to have that presence there. As far as the device itself goes, I think it's pretty fantastic. I think it's there. The hardware is there. It's powerful. Powerful machine. The the back touch is really cool. Um, I mean, all, all the the, um, the but I think the biggest thing is, like, what what is the interface and the operating system come down to and how easy is it to – everybody right now is really kind of um, – they're, they're accustomed to how the iPhone works and the Android works. And, it, and that's going to be kind of this, one of the biggest things to define the Vita's success is can we um, build a presence, um, a community, and uh, a marketplace to buy games and play games on there. I don't think it's just about playing, like, the big blockbuster games that can only be done on a Vita. I think it's also about playing games like Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds. Um, that's what people are going to expect. And if you want something that's going to do something different than the iPhone or the iPad, Vita can do that because it's more powerful. Got it. You're going to have those more powerful games, but we also need to have the other ones too that that uh, the casual things that that people just like to play. Right now. Taking a break from the gaming side, you may not have heard anything, but I thought I would ask. Have you happened to hear anything on the supposed God of War movie in the works? Um, boy, that's that's one. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about it over the years, but it's it's kind of I get the same reports that everybody else does. You know, it's, okay. It's there's rumor and speculation on the on the web, and and that's the thing about the the uh, movie industry. It's so much different than the game industry is that. Um, <laughs> deals can come really close. I mean, we've seen what's happened with Uncharted. They, you know, right. the director, and now they've got a new director. And um, it's all about getting first to get the financing, the backing, and then you have to get the talent. You got to secure the talent that comes with the director, and the director might rewrite the whole script, and then you know, the, um, it might not fit the kind of feel for the game anymore, and and you know, that person might not want to work on it, and then you got to find somebody else, and you got to. You know, who's going to act in it? There's, a, there's just so many things that have to fall in place. It's kind of the movie industry is kind of like it, once a, a movie comes out, it's kind of like magic. Like all these different connections needed to be made in the right order, and then you've got the movie. So it's just really hard to follow that stuff. Definitely. All right, now going back to gaming, introducing Kratos to the Mortal Kombat franchise was a match made in heaven for God of War fans across the globe. Have there been any talks in regards to Kratos possibly intruding on another title? You mean outside of like any other title? Like y- uh, yes, any other title. There's always conversations about that. I think that there there is always an interest in getting Kratos in other games, and we always have to be very careful about where we choose. Mortal Kombat. I mean, that was a no-brainer. I mean, that was right one of the easiest decisions that we ever made in terms of including Kratos, but. There's there are there's nothing that I can like. I can say one thing. There's nothing like kind of on the radar right now that I think is going to be going anywhere. But there always are ongoing discussions about different franchises and that kind of thing. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him somewhere else down the road. But there's to be honest with you, there's nothing happening right now. Okay. Now, obviously, you've become very successful in the video game business. What advice would you give to someone who's pursuing the dream of becoming a game director, such as yourself? Uh, well, you have to, I mean, I think becoming a, a director, I mean, you have to go through kind of the process of learning and understanding how games are made in general. That's, if that's what you aspire to. 
and you have to start somewhere in the games industry. Now, there's people that have started as testers that have worked their way up to the director, but not everybody wants to be a tester. You know, maybe you want to be a designer or an artist, and I think the best thing to do is, is uh, you know, go to school, um, really hone in, and what thing is the is the um, thing that really interests you the most, you know, that, that you're really going to be able to sink your teeth in. It doesn't mean, as a director, you got to wear a lot of different hats, but you have to start somewhere. So kind of, you know, if, you, if you're really into music, music for games or something, then study that. you got to get your foot in the door. And once you do, try to understand, you know, everything that's going on in the game, not only what you're doing, but, you know, the whole process as well. I think the other thing, too, is it's not, I don't, I don't think you necessarily need to like go to college or anything like that either. I think the industry is still at this point right now where we've seen a lot of guys that have gotten, um, you know, done things with Team Fortress and Unreal and, and they've been able to create their own maps and, and, you know, we love seeing that stuff because that's, sol- that's right there. You, you get the whole package. You get the, the design and you get the graphics. So, um, I think that's a good route to go as well. Right, and we've definitely seen a lot of people come out of the mobile business as well. With how simple it is to get a game on the App Store, the Android Marketplace, sure, a lot of people a, have came out there. That's fantastic, and and also, uh, you know, anything that you're going to do on PC and Flash, whatever, um, if you can get somebody's hands on it, um, and it's really good, they're going to get excited about it. And I, and I think the other thing too is if you're aspiring to be a director, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of it's just about ideas and. And always try challenging yourself to come up with new and fresh ideas. And even if you're not making them, get them down on paper and try to flush them out a little bit. Definitely. Now, Stig, I definitely appreciate your time. Now, to end it all off, with the question everyone once answered, was God of War 3 the end for Kratos or the God of War franchise as a whole? Wow. Um, <laughs> come like on, I give said, us something. <laughs> Well, like I said, and I think I've said this before, I think that the, the company, there's going to be more God of Wars. There has to be. Where does that fall in the universe? Where do they fall in the universe? I don't know. And, and wh- when are we going to see them? I don't know that either. But uh, it's, I think it's, there's a lot of money to be made there. And Why? It, and we, at the end of the day, we are a business. I, but when we finished God of War 3, like, kind of like where my head was, that was it. That was the end of the trilogy, and we told the story, and when we kind of gave it a fitting conclusion and took them out the right way, and, but we left it in a place that it could, obviously can, we don't know where he is, so it could go anywhere. I have an idea of where it would go, but, uh, okay. I'm not, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, we'll definitely have to stay tuned in. And just as an idea, I actually spoke with a couple people this past week because um, I was very excited when I, I told them, hey, I'm going to have the opportunity to talk to Stig. But a lot of people have told me that they would like to possibly take control of Zeus sometime in a really? future God of War game. So um, that would be pretty interesting. Um, so did they elaborate on that at all or – uh, they didn't, but I can have them elaborate it, and I'll get that information to you. Sure. I will. I will do my best to get the Very info to you. Yeah, that that would be awesome. Well, Stig, that concludes the interview. I want to thank you so much for your time. Right, awesome Nick. interview. Huge fan of God of War. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do next. We're out. Sure. Keep it ah, look at that. Little sites can't get exclusives. Who knows who I am? I can't get exclusives, right? What was that then? Huge interview, huge exclusives, huge shout out to Stig. You are the man. Thank you so much for taking the time to cooperate and do the interview with me and to not count me out just because I'm not IGN or Kotaku. I greatly appreciate it, Stig. I got more respect for this guy than pretty much anyone else in the gaming industry just because of this. So I want to thank you so much. Hung Fat, (laughs) he's been trying to sneak little details out of me this whole week. You finally got your answers. Wow, I am blown away. Now, if you listen to the whole interview, you would know at the end, I kind of discussed playing Zeus in the next God of War. And Stig was interested. So my question of the week how would you like to see Zeus implemented in future God of War titles? 
email me at admin at thegameraxis.com with your idea, and I will pass them on to Stig himself. And yeah, you know that uh, Kratos mask I was wearing at the beginning of the show? You want one? The two best ideas that I receive will win a Kratos mask. All you need to do is email me, admin at thegameraxis.com, subject line, God of War Contest, with your idea and your address. You'll be notified sometime next week whether you won or not. Either way, your ideas will be passed on the Stig. I'm going to compile a huge email and send it to Stig with all the details. And who knows, maybe we can get Zeus as a playable character in the next God of War. So that concludes the show, guys. Thank you all for watching. This is a memorable show, I know. And just remember, you heard it here first. Thank you guys so much. If you want to contact me, you can email me at admin at thegameraxis.com. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash thegameraxis. And be sure to keep checking back at thegameraxis.com. That's it for the show. What's up, IGN? What's up, Kotaku? Your boy got the exclusive. Peace. Access granted.